Hello guys, this is Matt and welcome to another optimization guide. This time we have the long-awaited Hogwarts Legacy and this is a title that has very interesting extremes. On one hand, you've got this amazing and spectacular rendition of the Wizarding World and you can really feel the passion poured out on this game. On the other hand, the performance of this game is a mess and optimizing for performance is by far the hardest I have ever done. But after so many hours of tweaking the settings, I can now share with you my optimization guide. Here are my specs to help you set your expectations for your own hardware. The objective of this guide is for us to hit a consistent 60 plus FPS while preserving visual quality and maintaining a smooth experience. Is that really achievable? Let's find out. There are two sets of performance problems in this game. One is GPU-related, and the other is CPU-related. Take note of your GPU usage and VRAM. Is your usage nearing 99% or stays at 99% most of the time? Is your VRAM consumption getting near the VRAM allocation of your GPU? If you answered yes to any one of those questions, then you are probably GPU bottlenecked. If you answered no and your GPU usage is well below 90 and hovers around 40 to 80 percent, then you're probably CPU bottlenecked. So kindly use the timestamps down below. For now, let's address the first set because GPU related performance is predictable and consistent. First, we have effects quality, and this controls the density and complexity of light particles casted by magic effects and other light sources. As the amount of particles decrease along the quality levels, there is a corresponding performance gain. The biggest jump to performance is moving from ultra to high. Also, effects quality controls the accuracy of light bounce on some surfaces, and this gives a sizable performance boost one set to high. Like this example, look at how the specular sheen on this rusted part of the floor has now been simplified when moving down to high. This also reduces the reflected color details on the floor as you can see here. And additionally, this setting also controls the presentation of SSR in some reflective surfaces. Just like this floor where for some odd reason, high quality looks to be more defined than ultra. This could be due to the added accuracy of light dispersion when using ultra, so I'm gonna leave this to you. You can choose ultra if you want a more natural looking image, but going to high can give you more defined reflections and a very substantial boost as well. But if you're having frame rate drops due to particle effects when casting spells, then you can use medium. Next up, we have post-process quality with the most noticeable visual change being ambient occlusion. Moving down the quality values will reduce the amount of contact shadows from objects which will ultimately result in a flat looking image just like the example here. Notice how the paintings look more detached and floaty as we move down to low. But this can really help us in our performance with the biggest gain found between high and medium. However, as you can see, you will be sacrificing a lot of depth and complexity to the image, especially indoors. But it still comes down to what you prefer. For me, I will use high to favor performance. Let's look at shadows next, and this one is an easy choice. Just go with high or ultra as performance gains are very small, and going down to medium will make casted sun shadows look like this. Notice how the shadows have now become a blurry mess and they're updating in a very choppy rate. Would you really want this for just two additional FPS? Come on, man. Next, let's go outside a castle so we can see the impact of foliage quality. Moving down the quality levels will reduce the density and variety of vegetation in the environment with the biggest gains coming from toggling high to medium. Moving down from ultra to high can also give you comparable gains. However, choosing low is not just worth it because the performance gain is very small and sometimes inconsistent. For this one, I recommend either high or medium. Now let's look back at Hogwarts Castle to check view distance quality. Moving down from ultra to high will reduce the draw distance of vegetation and terrain but the geometric quality of the castle is still preserved with some mild performance gains. Now, 
moving down to medium is interesting because not only is there no FPS benefit, but the only visual change I can see is the removal of the small watch tower linings on your left. The rest is exactly the same. However, moving down to low will not only give you the biggest performance gain in this setting, but it will also render the castle as a low LOD mesh with textures being simplified and the geometric complexity of the architecture noticeably reduced. For this one, I recommend using high. Let's move ahead to texture quality. This will be the biggest contributor in your VRAM consumption. And as you can see in this 1440p comparison, Ultra textures will increase your VRAM consumption by more than 2 gigabytes. As for the difference in image quality, it's really interesting because the only noticeable difference is when you move from high to medium. This means that ultra and high will look the same, while medium and low also look the same. Take note guys that this ground texture is the most obvious difference I can find and if you're normally playing the game, the texture detail is very similar from ultra to low. Like this example, the details on the boar statue, the flower, the concrete pot, and uh, even the low pillar is just indistinguishable between ultra and low. This is a no-brainer for GPUs with less than 12 gigabytes of RAM, only use low textures. If you have room to spare, however, use high textures because Ultra is just a waste. Our last settings for our GPU bound group are material quality, fog quality, and sky quality. I placed them last here because they're not worthy to be talked about. They don't bring anything substantial to our performance and tweaking them just damages image quality without any significant gains. Just like material quality over here where turning to low just simplifies the material details of these floor panels and also sky quality which just turns clouds into mush without significant performance gains. Unlike Assassin's Creed Odyssey if you can recall back in 2018, for these settings you can just use high for all three of them. So that's it guys, those are just the settings you need to tweak if you are GPU bound. Oh, you wanna know about RTX? Okay, well, it is definitely GPU related, but I'm gonna be honest here guys, I do not recommend RTX at all. Unless you want your gameplay experience to be a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. And not only that, but the image will actually look worse in my opinion. Let's look at RTX reflections for example. This is probably the most noticeable RTX setting and some might find this attractive, especially in certain angles like this where ray traced reflections on ultra quality do look impressive in reflecting the immediate environment as compared to just SSR. However, RTX reflections in general look very messy and shimmery to me, even in ultra quality. Just like this one here, look at how RTX exhibit crawling artifacts within the ray traced reflections. The fact that this is already on ultra quality and SSR looks more stable? Hmm. And most importantly, RTX reflections just ruin the art style of Hogwarts Castle to my eyes. The fine details on the floor and the intricate artwork in the surfaces are now obstructed with those moving and crawling artifacts and they do not look like natural floors anymore, but shiny mirrors instead. Also, water reflections still use SSR either way, so this setting is just not worth the performance sacrifice to me. Next, we go to RTX Shadows, which further increases the accuracy of shadow rendering just like this tree on screen. Notice how the tree shadows get softer and more diffuse as they move away from the source object. It also adds fine shadows to all physical objects in this game, no matter how small they are. For this example, your hood now projects its own shadow to your body. But the performance trade-off is so huge and it's really not that noticeable unless you are taking screenshots. So I recommend turning this off as well. Lastly, we have RCX AO and this time you choose for yourself. Which do you think looks better? Image number one, or image number two. Next, image number one or image number two. If you voted number two for both comparisons, then turn off RTX AO. 
because image number one is with ray tracing AO. If you want to choose the best upscaling method, go with DLSS. Here's a clear example. Not only does DLSS give you the best performance, but it is also the only solution that can resolve shadow flickering within alpha transparency such as hair and leaves. In this example, look at how there's busy and noisy movement within this tree model that even DLAA cannot resolve. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, only consider DLSS. If you have an AMD card, then use FSR 2.0. So that's it guys, those are our GPU bound settings. Now, let's address this one big elephant in the room, the stuttering. In this game, there are three kinds of stutters or frame rate drops. The first happens when you're simply moving around and lots of small assets are loaded in. The second occurs during door transitions where a large chunk of game space is loaded in. And the third is triggered when simply moving your camera around. If you have your frame time graph displayed, take note of how erratic and spiky this line becomes when you move around the world. Our ideal experience should be that this graph will be a smooth in a straight line. I've got some bad news however, as there is no current solution to completely eradicate this problem. What we can do for now though is focus on the FPS drops we can control so we can mitigate them and lessen their impacts on our experience. This is where our CPU bound settings come in, and its main culprit, population quality. This single setting is responsible for punishing your CPU, which then lowers your GPU usage drastically. If you are using ultra preset and your GPU usage is still below the 60s, turning down population quality will improve GPU usage and significantly increase your frame rates in the process, just like the example you're seeing on screen. Also, the FPS drops that occur when simply moving the camera around, this is drastically reduced by lowering this setting. The unfortunate side effect, however, is that this hugely affects atmosphere as the number of NPCs are reduced, and the sadder part is that the substantial benefits come from moving down to medium or low, which just hurts atmosphere even further. Also, adjusting the settings outside the graphics menu affects GPU usage. First, we have the FOV slider. This increases the demand for the CPU as more elements are displayed on screen. But moving this to the lowest value may feel claustrophobic and quite restrictive to your eyes. I recommend just sticking to the default FOV for this one. Lastly, please turn off NVIDIA Reflex guys as setting this to on plus boost will degrade your performance by a significant margin. So that's it guys, we finally reached the end of our optimization quest. Once again, here are our optimized settings. Effects quality on high, material quality on high, fog quality on high, sky quality on high, foliage quality on medium, post-process quality on high, shadows on high or ultra, texture on only either high or low, view distance on high, population quality on medium or low, all ray tracing disabled, and choose either quality NVIDIA DLSS or AMD FSR 2.0. Now, let's see how our optimized settings compare to the ultra preset. First, let's test an indoor scene comparison. Look at how VRAM is now properly managed, which fixes those extreme hitching that happens when it gets filled during area transitions. Let's move to an outdoor scene. The most obvious difference on here would be the reduction of foliage density, but for me, I think it still looks good. We also benefit hugely from the proper VRM consumption as Ultra Preset once again suffers from those severe stutters as you can see right now. However, if you can notice, our frame times are not exactly the uh, smoothest especially in Hogsmeade. This stutter is just unplayable. So I recommend capping your frame rate. Do not use the in-game limiter guys as this has very bad frame pacing. Instead, use RTSS to cap your frame rate to the lowest FPS value you can observe. For example, if your general frame rate is higher than 60 but drops within the 60 FPS range, then cap your FPS to 60. 
This will ensure that drops won't go out of range as much as possible. In this example, I am capping at 120 FPS. And look at the difference between the in-game limiter and RTSS. RTSS just perfectly smoothens our frame times and results in a very solid straight line. Unfortunately, stutters will still occur as they are inherent to the game's optimization. In Hogsmeade, for example, spikes in frame rate are still present but are at least reduced significantly. It's sad to say, but this is the best we can do for now. I have already tried other fixes, such as adding the game's EXE as an exception to the control flow guard, but it's not really effective for me. So that's it guys, I hope this video helps you out. Please do tell me your experience with the game, and if there's anything I missed that helps performance, please do share them down in the comments section. Thank you very much guys, take care, and bye bye.